Hey folks, Brian Hoagley here. Welcome back to CISO Life, brought to you by Side Channel. You can follow us anywhere, down around on social media, Twitter, LinkedIn, or of course, subscribe right here on YouTube. I get a lot of questions about our engagement practices at Side Channel, and it's always interesting, why do people come to someone to talk about cybersecurity for whatever reasons, be CISO consulting, I need help, give me some advice, whatever it is. There's there's usually a lot of reasons. I've I've seen three reasons as, as main drivers, right? People's customers are driving a lot of the, the discussion around, do you have a security program, okay? People's boards, organizations' boards, or their C-suite are asking about the cybersecurity posture of the organization. And is it the CTO? Is it the CIO? Is it the CFO? Is it anybody but a chief information security officer, a CISO, who's trying to articulate and drive the narrative? And then the last largest one that I see are regulators. And besides being a great song by Warren G, um, regulators are, are making cyber a, a very, very real thing for organizations that otherwise previously it wasn't, right? So you're seeing the SEC coming out with their information. You're seeing the FTC come out with their safeguard rule. You're seeing New York State DFS and other states creating a high watermark for regulation that's going to mandate cybersecurity for organizations. Now, when you look at each of these, these are all obviously external drivers. Ideally, you know, you do want that internal driver where you have C-suite and leadership recognizing that cyber is an issue and they want to just kind of do the right thing, right? Well, not always possible, so never waste these opportunities. Of course, the fifth one, why do you need to build a cybersecurity program? Because you are post, post breach. And this basically means that the janitors have come in, you've been popped, the janitors have come in, cleaned up the mess, and you were sitting there going, I don't ever wanna go through that again. So these are usually the main drivers for why you need to build and articulate a cybersecurity program, but it doesn't really stop here. This is obviously the catalyst. Now, how do we get into, what do we do about it? So now that you've figured out the reasons for why you need to be building a program, whether it was customers, regulators, board C-suite, post-post breach, or just you've decided that you wanna do the right thing, I applaud you, but now what? Obviously, you need to figure out what do you look like. And the biggest thing to do here is some type of risk assessment, okay? That then leads into a gap analysis. Now, you can't do a gap analysis unless you have understood, really, what you are going against. The gap analysis needs to set across some type of framework, right? Or some type of standard. Now, that can also be some type of regulation. These are all defined. You do not need to make them up, okay? A framework or a standard, a framework could be something like NIST CSF, okay? A standard could be something like ISO, right? A regulation could be something like New York State DFS, Part 500, okay? Basically, it's fancy ways of saying, Somebody else has defined what I need to be doing. Let me follow that. Once you've established what that standard or framework or regulation is, a gap analysis is really bouncing off what you should be doing against what you do look like, all right? Now, this can be a risk assessment, this can be a control assessment, whatever you wanna call it, okay? You need to do some type of review, whether it's a self-review or it is with using a third party but you need to get to this point where you can say, look, I now know what my gaps are. I now know and have a good understanding of where I am to where I need to be, right? This is an easy process. This, this should not be, uh, as a process, this should not be convoluted. The work that's gonna go into this might be difficult, it might be time consuming, it might take up a lot of resources time, but this process and this concept should not be very difficult. This is really it. 
select what you need to look like, understand what you currently look like, and allow that gap analysis to eventually drive some type of roadmap. And that roadmap is going to be what sets up your organization for what to go do. You're gonna put your resources, you're gonna put your budget, you're gonna put your people, the technology selections, that is what is gonna layer into this roadmap. And that's exactly what you want out of somebody who is at the helm of your cybersecurity program, whether that is a CISO or that's a VCSO from somebody like Side Channel. Now, do you need full-time resources to do these things? No, you don't. So if you find as though you are strapped for resources, strapped for the dollars to be able to make this happen, look at third parties to be able to do this. Plenty of organizations, and I can tell you we are one, that can focus in and address each of these aspects and make sure that you are well knowledge on what do they mean, what are the impacts, what does the path look like, and what does the budget look like to make these things happen. Risk assessments should not be very costly. They should be a low cost um, capability to get you to where the real work needs to happen. So again, you need to determine obviously what you want to be held against as a standard, a framework or regulation. You need to do either a control or risk assessment on what you look like today against that assessment. And out of that, do a gap analysis to determine where your deficiencies are. That will then lead into what your roadmap should look like and contain to be able to get you from where you are to where you want to be. I'm Brian Hoagley. Just some thoughts. Hope everybody has a great day. Be safe. Talk to you next time. Thanks.